Frightening the Fear Once upon a time, an old woodcutter lived with his three sons in a village near a forest. The woodcutter would cut the firewood and carry it on his back to the town. The money he earned provided for their daily needs. His days were passing in this way. Old age, the in inevitable devastator for every human being, struck down the old woodcutter too. He gradually became slow and lame. One day, he gathered his children together. Listen, my dear children, he started to speak. I have no longer strength in my knees, nor luster in my eyes, nor strength in my arms to swing an axe. If we do not want to depend on other people, we have to carry on working. From now on, each of you will each take a turn to go into the forest. You will cut and sell firewood, just as I did. With the money you will earn, we will make our living. The eldest of you will take the first turn, and then turned to his eldest son and said, My son, tomorrow you will go to the forest, he ordered. In the morning, the eldest son got up early, took his rope and axe, and set off for the forest. The roads which were difficult for the old man were easy for the young man. The young man walked and skipped along to the forest. Following his father's advice, he did not cut down young trees. He stopped under an old, nearly dead tree. He swung the axe with all his might. Just as he was taking a second swing, he heard a thunderous voice. If you swing your axe once more at that tree, I will cut you into pieces, chew you like gum and swallow you like candy. The boy was gripped by fear. He threw down the axe and rushed headlong out of the forest. He arrived home and told his father everything that had happened. Look, son, said his father. For all these years, I have been cutting down firewood in those forests, but I have never heard anything like this. It's obvious that you are really frightened. Tomorrow, your younger brother will go to the forest. The eldest brother was ashamed, and the middle son was worried. They looked down in silence. Morning came. The middle son also got his rope and axe and set off for the forest. He did not walk quickly like his brother had done. His fears were like a rope around his feet and thorns scratching his legs. In the end, he came to the forest. He stopped under a dead tree. He looked to his right and his left. Then he swung his axe at the foot of the tree. Just as he started to cut, he also heard the voice. Now it's you who came here, eh? Well, anyway, for some time I've been longing for tender human flesh. If you swing the axe again, I will eat you, young man. The young man was scared out of his wits. Taking to his heels, he ran back along the same road in the 15 minutes which had taken him three hours before and managed to escape home. Even before his father had asked him, he gave an account of everything that had happened. His father took his words very badly. He felt disappointed and angry in equal measure. What cowards you are, he shouted. It would be better if I were to go there in spite of my old age. Now it was the turn of the youngest boy. Because he was so young, his father did not want to let him go. But the boy insisted, saying he would certainly go to the forest on the next day to cut firewood. Oh, well, let me give you a try, his father said. Morning came. The youngest boy got up even before the sun's gleam shone between the mountains. Taking his axe, he went to the forest. He stopped under a nearly dead tree. He said, in the name of Allah, and brought down the axe. And, of course, that thunderous voice roared again in the forest. Hey, you human being, do you want to be killed? If you swing your axe again, I'll make you sorry for the day you were born. The boy paid no attention to the voice. He carried on working. All of a sudden, he noticed a huge shadow. He looked up and saw a black giant. The boy was very afraid but did not show his feelings. 
he straight away bent down and took out of his bags one of the eggs which he had bought for lunch. He called out to the giant, You wretched person who think himself so strong! Do you see this white marble stone in my hand? He threatened the giant by showing the egg as a stone. As the giant was looking at the egg, the boy squeezed it in the palm of his hand. Of course, the white and yolk of the broken egg ran down his wrists. The boy made his voice louder. Get out of here at once, or I'll squeeze the juice out of you, just as I squeeze the juice out of this marble stone. So there, he shouted. The giant stared blankly at him in confusion. Then he said, All right, all right. If I don't bother you, will you spare my life? The boy was not content to leave the matter at this point. On one condition, he replied. Tonight, you will cut down and bring all the dry firewood in the forest to the front of our house. Only then will I not squeeze the juice out of you. Now take this axe and start cutting the firewood. The giant bent down. Why should I need an axe? he asked. I will do it with my bare hands. The giant gathered as much firewood as a giant can carry and followed the boy to the house. He put down the firewood and sent off for the forest to bring more and more through the night. The old father and the boys came out when they heard the sound of the firewood being thrown down. When they saw more firewood heaped up than they could gather in a month, they were astonished. Straight away the father asked, Didn't you hear the voice which your brothers heard? I heard it, father, said the boy. His brothers interrupted excitingly, saying, so how did you bring this mountain of firewoods? The boy said, by frightening fear and making the black giant carry them. <laughs>